thank you for joining us for this 2018 winter update from the Wallingford Health Department. My name is Eloise Hiswood and I am the Director of Health for the Wallingford Health Department. For those of you who don't know, the Wallingford Health Department is located in Wallingford Town Hall at 45 South Main Street. If you ever need to contact us, our number is on the website, as is our email. So I just wanted to introduce quick two ladies who are joining me today. One is Alexis Steele, who is our health educator, and another is Katie Braun, who is a community person. And um, they're going to give us an update in a minute, but I did want to quick uh, give you a background about what we're talking about. I wanted to give a background as to Healthy Wallingford 2020 and our update. I know last time we met, I talked a little bit about what is Healthy Wallingford and what are some of our plans and our goals. We've made a lot of headway since we first established our plan. And one of the things I want to talk about today is one of our priority focus areas, which we call Eat, Play, Unplug, Choose Kindness. We understand that there are a lot of stressors in the world, and it's evident all around us um, by our responses as we treat one another and um, the constant overload that we're faced with electronics, uh, communications, whether it be phone, email, text. And so we developed a focus group concerning what is it that we can do to address the stressors in everyday life. And one of the things that we came up with after a study group um, with our group from the Board of Ed, uh, a bunch of students and quite a few of other uh, community partners got together and we have a task force. And one of the things that we came up with, choose kindness. How is it that we get the message out to our community that by being kind, by choosing civility, it really does lower your stress level and in turn impacts your health? So Katie, can you tell me a little bit about your aspect of Choose Kindness and how it is that you're trying to embrace this concept? Yes, absolutely. I am a member of the First Congregational Church in, in, in Wallingford, right on Main Street, and, and at the at the beginning of of the year, we we each receive star gifts, and and my star gift for this year was was kindness. And so I had a conversation with 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 our new minister, Kathy Cunliffe, who 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 had found something on the internet in, in involving kindness rocks. So I did a little digging, and and I found the kindness rocks project. Which was founded by 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 a woman in, in Cape Cod, who 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 walks along the beach, and 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 collects rocks, and and one day she she wrote a nice message on a couple rocks and and left them in a in a pile. Her friend came along and snapped and and found th these rocks, snapped a photo of of them, and sent it to her and said, "Did you do this?" Of course, of course, the woman said, "No, but 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 I wonder who did." And she said, "Well, it made my day." And that's when the project started. So there, are, so there are, there are branches of this project all all across New England, and so. And so my goal was to was to start a project here in Wallingford as a way to to, to have the kindness be spread spread throughout. Um, these rocks are painted and 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 nice messages are written on them, such as such as believe in yourself and 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 you are loved. And the and and they can be de de decorated by by kids, adults alike. So and. And so these the, these rock gardens will, will be placed on the parade grounds during this spring, and 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 when and when residents come by these these rock gardens, they may stop by and, and just and just admire, or they can take one and 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 feel its its inspiration with them as a way to choose kindness. Great. So I understand that you're going to be placing some of these rocks at the uh, by the church, um, which happens to be located by the on the parade ground, but really by the Founders Rock and by the sign to the entrance to the church. So it doesn't really interfere with people walking no, as, as they're walking by. It's a wonderful project, and I know that your uh, your minister is also part of the town task force concerning Choose Kindness um, project. And again. 
um, it really is something that we're trying to embrace and to get better advertisement and better marketing throughout our community so that, again, we're looking at it from the impact of reducing stress and individual lives because we know that it makes a difference. To be kind makes a difference in somebody's life. And so thank you very much for talking about some of your rocks. I look forward to seeing them. These are lovely displays that you have here. Thank you. And it's wonderful. Um, I'm hoping that maybe we can take your project and uh, replicate it at other places beyond the church. Uh, maybe we can embrace it through our youth and social services at some of our other locations. I know that one of our schools already has a uh, Moran Middle School already has a, a similar project, but nothing to the degree that you're talking about. <laughs> so it's wonderful, and I truly thank you for uh, updating me on that, and I look forward to hearing more about it. Thank you so much. So Alexis Steele, what can you tell me about the Choose Kindness Project and other marketing events that are happening in town? Right, so the health department has created a slew of these materials that promote choosing kindness, as you can see this lovely sign back here. We choose to treat you with kindness, please treat others the same. Um, you can see this sign at the Senior Center, at Masonic Hair, at the library, and at Town Hall, of course. Um, we also created some stickers, some window clings, um, little stand-up signs um, that I've distributed to a lot of places here in town. And we just wanted to create a friendly visual reminder to just, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. Um, you never know what everyone else is going through, so it's, it's great to, you know, choose kindness. We want to spark a movement here, which is why it's so important Kindness Rocks, a great project that's going on in town, and we'd love to um, see more of that here in Wallingford. It's a great opportunity to get the word out, and really we need to, um, which is part of the reason why we're filming this today, is to really get our community involved to embrace it. It's clearly one thing to say, choose kindness. It's another to embrace it. It's another to model that behavior. And I know in Town Hall, we are trying to model that behavior through our workforce so that we treat our residents with the kindness and respect that they deserve when they come in for a service. And we also, as you said, have gone out into our community. We've been very active with our um, our businesses in town. I know that last year during the Christmas stroll or the holiday stroll, there were signs about choose kindness. And again, there were uh, posters made trying to start that seed, to plant that seed of kindness. And so as we continue into our uh, choose kindness and our healthy Wallingford aspect of that project, if anybody's interested in finding more information, they're welcome to contact the Wallingford Health Department. Again, our number is on the website, or you can contact me directly, or Alexis Steele, who is our health educator. Well, I thank you both, Alexis and Katie, for joining me here on this segment of the update for Healthy Wallingford and Wallingford Health Department for the winter 2018, and we'll be back. Welcome back to the update of the Wallingford Health Department winter segment 2018. I want to thank our guest today, uh, Katie Braun, who gave us an update on the Choose Kindness and her rock project. Thank you very much. And also Alexis Steele, who is still going to be joining us here today. And we're going to talk a little bit about some other updates that are happening with the Healthy Wallingford project in particular. So can you give me an update as to some other things beyond the Choose Kindness that are happening? Absolutely. So beyond Choose Kindness, we wanted to make a presence on social media and online. So we've created a Facebook account, Healthy Wallingford 2020 on Facebook, on Twitter, Healthy WLFD 2020, and on Instagram, Healthy Wallingford 2020. So we just wanted to create a space where we can put out some health tips, um, recipes, Great ways to eat, play, unplug, and choose kindness. Very good. Thank you. Of course, the whole eat, play, unplug, we, we don't want you to get too glued to your, uh, to your computer because we want exactly. you to de-stress, unplug, take time for yourself. 
But beyond that, taking time for yourself, I want to update a little bit about another project that's happening in town um, concerning our elderly population or those who care for our elderly population, more specifically uh, falls prevention. As we know, individuals, uh, as we get older, our gait is not what it normally is, and we have more accidents, trips, and falls. So um, what can you tell me a little bit about your fall prevention program? So the Fall Prevention Program is really important. It engages with the residents in town by offering a fall assessment, an in-home fall assessment. So this is where the public health nurse and myself would go out into the home. We would conduct a balance test, go through your medications with you, um, do an in-home assessment, assess if there's any hazards on the ground, adequate lighting. So things like that. We'd also bring you a nice swag bag of uh, grippy socks, a flashlight, um, other things in there that would help you prevent a fall because falls are the leading cause of injury in older adults So it's a really scary thing if you fall and you're alone now. This is funded through the health department, correct? This is funded through the health department. I believe there's a three-year grant that we um, use those funds to help make sure that our residents are safer Oh, very good. That must be the uh, block grant that we use within our community. That's what we're referring to, right? Yes. So it's a wonderful opportunity if you or someone uh, care for an elderly person or you yourself are elderly, um, if you want to contact us. Again, our numbers are on the website and we will do a free home assessment, assessment concerning uh, trip and reduction and a uh, medication management review. Right. Very good, and you also get a lovely swag bag. <laughs> so that's a wonderful opportunity. What about um, some things that are happening that uh, in this upcoming 2018 season? So in 2018, you can expect to see a healthy dining guide from the Wallingford Health Department. So this dining guide is gonna highlight restaurants in Wallingford that we deem to be healthy, offer nutritious alternatives. They offer smaller portion sizes, vegetarian options. So we just wanted to create a guide where we can really showcase those um, restaurants that offer these healthy options. That's a wonderful opportunity. I know that we had it in the past. And right. so what are you doing to encourage some of our restaurants to participate? So this is our third edition of the Dining Guide. And to encourage our restaurants in town, we're going to go out in person because it's always more effective to go out with that survey in hand and speak to the manager and ask him to fill it out, send it back to the health department, and then we'll go over all the surveys we receive and decide which ones are going to be um, featured in our guide. And we're looking to have about 20 to 30 restaurants featured, but more is always welcome. No, it's wonderful. As we uh, come into the new year, usually we have New Year's resolutions. Right. And one of those generally are about eating better and um, physical activity, Re, uh, reducing our weight gain exactly. that we have over the holiday season. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful opportunity to get back out there. And what is it that you're looking at when you're um, trying to determine what is a healthy uh, meal? So a healthy meal, I like to say you want to see a rainbow and you want to see half of your plate, fruits and vegetables, the other half protein and carbs. So do you have a grading system? We do have a grading system. Oh, tell me the a little bit about system, that. Um, the grading system is, uh, I believe, going to be bronze, silver, and gold standards. Um, and if you meet over 75% of our criteria, then you'll be included as um, a bronze, or I think that's 75 to 80, and then 81 to um, 89 is going to be silver, and above that will be gold. So we're looking at if they offer vegetarian options, if they offer low-fat options, low-salt options, um, if they offer skim milk and you know your coffee. Or, um, that's how we're going to be basing if they're healthy or not. Oh, that's wonderful. I know that a lot of the uh, larger chain restaurants are now putting their calorie count on the menu. And I know for a fact, when I look at that calorie count, it most definitely sways me from ordering certain things that I thought I was going to order when I first went in there. Exactly. So, but this isn't really about calorie count. This is about offering nutritious portions of food, correct? Right. Portions also, we'll give them bonus points if they offer locally sourced food, um, if they offer like vegan options as well, because that's a good way to uh, gauge if they're going to be a healthy restaurant. 
Oh, absolutely. And, and especially now with so many allergies coming coming right. to be, it seems that lately everybody has a food allergy and, and they're very serious right, and they can be life-threatening. So it's wonderful that you're going to highlight some of these things from a health aspect. And I know that there are some, uh, some restaurants that now have gluten-free menus. Exactly. So again, another thing to include on your dining guide. That's wonderful. Very good. Can we talk a little bit about our um, Wallingford MRC, who we are, what we do? Yes, I would love to talk about the MRC. Um, so the MRC is a medical reserve corps uh, unit in Wallingford, and we're a local group of volunteers that would respond in a public health emergency. So what's a public health emergency? That would be if we had to um, activate our shelter in town, or if we had to dispense um, vaccinations to all the residents in town, we would need a core group of people to call upon to help us make sure this emergency response is timely and successful. That's what. So now, are they're not just? Uh, I, I know the name is kind of a misnomer because it says Medical Reserve Corps, but they're both correct, medical correct. and non-medical. Correct. And yeah. how many citizen volunteers do you have now? So citizen volunteers, we have 126. Wow, that's wonderful. So these are just people in our community who say, I can help if you need me. Exactly, and we wanna make sure that they're adequately prepared to help. So we offer free CPR certification, a free first aid certification to our members, and also a good incentive for people to join because these are valuable certifications. Oh, absolutely. Very good, that's wonderful. And uh, so if somebody was interested in becoming an MRC member? Give us a call. I honestly come into the health department, come talk to me. It's really simple, fill out an application. I'll snap your picture for an official ID um, and you'll be a member and you'll have access to our free trainings. Um, we also do community trainings. We host um, trainings at the library, at Parks and Rec, so. That's wonderful. I know that it's you've good. been involved a lot with the um, babysitting class, and you're doing um, hands-only CPR for them? Yep, hands-only CPR uh, for kids who are interested in um, getting their baby uh, babysitting certification, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you need CPR for that, so um, we offer hands-on, or hands-free uh, CPR for them. Very good. So I did want to point out that I know that um, our MRC is going to be very involved in our full-scale exercise. So for those who don't realize it, the health department also has an obligation um, for the state and through CDC concerning mass dispensing in time of a biological event. It sounds horrible, but think of the flu, if you will, also a biological event. And so we are doing a exercise, as we call it, uh, a shelter mock shelter exercise and a pod point of dispensing exercise this summer. And um, tell me a little bit about that. So uh, July 7th through July 14th, uh, we'll be calling in this work camp. And there are a group of people who are going to be by day fixing up houses, doing yard work, and um, by night they're gonna, they'll need a place to stay. So we're going to be um, basically sheltering them at Sheehan. And um, then we'll be doing a pod exercise, the points of dispensing, on July 19th. July 9th, while they're there, and make sure that uh, we know how to adequately set up the pod, make sure we can get everyone through the pod, and make sure it's successful. That sounds like a win-win for the town. I mean, so we have, we have an obligation to exercise our plans to make sure that we're prepared, to make sure that our volunteers understand their responsibilities in a real-world event, and clearly to have a group come in and... Uh, you know, and impact our community from the aspect of doing home repair for those who are elderly, veterans, or those who are um, can't afford to create their own home repairs. It's a wonderful opportunity, and it really is a good mix. And I'm glad that the MRC is part of that. I'm glad that the health department is able to broker with such a wonderful group to bring this to our community. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, your role in the health department beyond the MRC and beyond the falls prevention. I know that you're a health educator. Right. And so are you available, uh, you and perhaps a public health nurse, to do some outreach in our community? We would love that, yeah. We love to get involved with community members, do any type of outreach. We're always willing to help and we want to create some more programs available to the, the residents and see how we can help everyone out. Very good. I know one thing that we've been doing from the health department, which is vitally important for a segment of our community, our younger children, is we're doing some lead poisoning prevention intervention. Um, a lot of people think that lead poisoning is no longer an issue in our community, but it most certainly is. Anytime there is defective paint, 
that uh, from a house that was built before 1978, there's potential for there to be a lead poisoning problem with the children. So I know that we have a separate program, uh, not necessarily Alexis, but a separate program who will come out to do assessments in your home um, for prevention aspect. Talk to me a little bit about the asthma program. So the asthma program, um, we want to be approaching daycares in town so that we can kind of collaborate with the parents of daycare age children and let them know what asthma looks like, um, what environmental risk factors would be in their home that would you know, dispose their child to be having an asthma attack or um, aggravate their lungs in any way. So we want to work with parents of daycare kids and make sure that they know these things. No, that's wonderful because uh, if you don't understand what's uh, triggering your asthma, Children may have an event where they need to go to the emergency room or where they need to lose uh, absentee from school from something that was preventable. So it's a wonderful program that uh, a staff member comes in, Alexis uh, may come in with a sanitarian to do an assessment at the house and to educate the parent and depending on the age of the child to also educate the child so that they can prevent an asthma event. Asthma can be a life-threatening situation, and so it's another wonderful thing that we, that we provide at the health department. So this has been a wonderful opportunity to get some information. And Katie, again, I want to thank you very much for your, uh, your enthusiasm in the uh, Rock Project and the Choose Kindness Project. So please make sure that you start looking in your community for your rocks that are going to be... Um, words of kindness, uh, words to support, and really, uh, if you come upon the garden, right, I, you can take a rock with you if you feel the need. Absolutely, yes. So that's wonderful. Take it home, um, think upon it, uh, help, help you to relieve some of the stress that's happening in our life, because we know that everybody is facing stress. No matter who we are, uh, there's a different level of stress. Some of us may be caring for a sick child, an elderly parent, um, work overload, um, school, school can be very stressful. So it's wonderful that we're getting the word out. And really the most important thing is that anybody who's listening right now, um, embrace the concept, choose kindness, pass it along, and um, together we can truly make the Wallingford a healthy Wallingford, which is ultimately our goal here. So I thank you both for joining me. It's been a pleasure. And um, I look forward to more information on the rock garden as it takes off in Wallingford. And who knows where we're going to see these gardens next. So it's wonderful. Katie, thank you very much. Alexis, thank you for joining me. Thank you all for joining me here on this segment of uh, the Wallingford Health Department Update, Winter 2018. Wallingford rocks.